From here to the stars, I am your host, Stephen Ewan Cobb. Our guest today is Jeff Grayson, who serves as chairman of the board of the Tau Zero Foundation and is on the advisory board of the TVIW. You are the chairman of the board of the Tau Zero Foundation. Would you describe what it is and its function? Well, the Tau Zero Foundation is a nonprofit foundation for advanced propulsion that can scale over time to interstellar flight. And its origins really come out of the NASA Breakthrough Propulsion Physics Program. Uh, Mark Millis, our founder, was the director of that program. And when NASA funding for that program ceased, he started looking for philanthropic and private backing to keep some of that work going. In recent years, our focus has shifted um, more towards breakthrough propulsion capabilities that we can do within known physics. Um, and that's proving to be a very fruitful area. And I'm quite optimistic about our prospects for coming up with a strategy that can lead to interstellar flight within credible timeframes. You are also very much involved with the TVIW. Would you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, well, TVIW is really the premier conference uh, for researchers active in interstellar propulsion and other aspects of interstellar flight to get together. Um, the It's every year and a half, roughly, um, and uh, there aren't a lot of researchers active in this area, so it's not a really big conference, but it's a really high-quality conference. It reminds me a lot of some of the conferences that were happening 20, 25 years ago in commercial space. There's a lot of that energy in the room, a lot of that sense of a lot of possibilities, and the people who are working in the field are very passionate about it. So it's a fun group. The work they're doing centers very much on interstellar exploration, either on unmanned or eventually manned missions. What is your personal vision for the future of scaling out the infrastructure throughout the solar system and such? To where we could actually achieve these kinds of goals. There's quite a diversity of opinion within the interstellar research community about the best way forward. Um, my own belief and the position that the Fau Zero Foundation takes is that substantial missions are not likely to be funded until the time of flight is compatible with the human lifetime. 30-ish, 40-ish years. Even for robotic missions, the challenge is, try as we might, those are going to be major missions. You know, they're going to be, at best, comparable to big projects like the Webb Space Telescope or the Voyager program or Cassini or things like that. It's not very likely that those missions are going to get funded if the people who go out and lobby for and champion the funding for those missions can't start a project that some of the founders of are going to be around to publish the scientific results of. Um, we just don't have mechanisms for um, funding projects that don't return something in and for another hundred years. So um, that really allows us at the foundation to, to prioritize working exclusively on the propulsion part of the problem. Because all of the other things that you would do, what data would you collect? How would you transmit it? How would you provide the power to the spacecraft to keep it alive in the darkness between the stars? Those kinds of things are entirely driven by your solution to the propulsion problem. Uh, you know, how, until you know how long the mission is going to be and something about what the spacecraft design is like, it's hard to make a lot of progress on the other areas. And propulsion is a big problem. Uh, so that's where we focus and we're focusing on propulsion that has the ability to, to scale to the point. I'll use that word again, scale, because it's very important. It has, it doesn't mean that we can start 
going at those speeds, but we want to look at investing in propulsion capabilities that can grow to the capability to get up to something like 20% or more of the speed of light so that the mission duration, including the time to transmit the data back, becomes compatible with something like a scientist's career. Okay, I have a list of hurdles that have to be overcome, and propulsion seems to be at the top of everyone's list. Yep. <laughs> In space, propulsion defines what you can do. It's, that's, that's just that simple. In science fiction movies and television shows, interstellar travel is shown as being trivial. But we live in the real world. As you were mentioning, interstellar travel is going to be extremely difficult. Do you believe interstellar travel is impossible, inevitable, or somewhere in between? Well, the only fair answer to that is something in between. It's obviously not impossible. Uh, we can see ways to do it. Um, it's obviously not inevitable. You know, it, it's not inevitable that that 100 years from now we'll have a technological civilization for humanity to live in. Um, so it's a choice, and it's a choice that I think it's important that we make. And the reason why it's so fundamental and so interesting to me is that those challenges are linked. In order for us to maintain and grow a technological civilization, we need sources of energy that can grow with our civilization. Uh, already today, most of the challenges that we face here on Earth can be traced back to a lack of affordable energy uh, or a lack of affordable energy that has environmental consequences that we want to live with. Uh, and the problem of interstellar flight is daunting because the energy content in a fast moving interstellar spacecraft is a big number. Uh, so in order to seriously address the problems of advanced propulsion, whether that be interstellar flight or even advanced fast transport to the outer solar system, you're talking about technologies that can collect, use, store, transmit, much larger amounts of energy than we're used to. And those are the same problems that we're facing as the big challenges of our civilization. So there's no way to study one without studying the other. There's no way to make progress on one without making progress on the other. And the interstellar flight problem is so challenging, you immediately can discard incremental improvements. You know, we need to improve our capabilities by orders of magnitude. A solution that's 10% better is just not relevant. So it forces you to look creatively at where there might be huge improvements to make. And that's, I think, an area of research that's both challenging, interesting, and important to us as a civilization. That was Jeff Grayson. This has been From Here to the Stars a video series created by the Tennessee Valley Interstellar Workshop. The TVIW is a non-profit organization dedicated to thoroughly exploring the science and engineering that can eventually open up the reality of interstellar travel. I have been your host, Stephen Ewan Cobb. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, and you can subscribe to our channel for other such videos. On behalf of all of us here at the Tennessee Valley Interstellar Workshop, I thank you.